All right, we have a solar system now that has a sun in it or a star, uh, some chunks of ice at the edges, some chunky bits of rock in this. The You've center. still got a disk of mostly gas, yeah. uh, but in the outer parts, it's going to have some grains of ice in the middle. In a bit, it's going to have more grains of mineral rocks and so on. So, but how do we, how, we still have a lot of steps to go or something to happen for us to have a solar system of biggy things and no gas. So what we think happens now is that these tiny grains, which to begin with are going to be smaller than the human eye could see, are going to start sticking together. Uh, probably from you know, things like Van der Waals forces, as they're drifting through the gas cloud, they might bump into each other, they've probably got sticky coatings of hydrocarbons on them. And so slowly these particles get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're kind of, you know, you have your little ball of dirt or your little snowball, and now you're starting to roll it around, you're starting to pick up a few more and a few more and a few more. It's actually the same thing happens in a rainstorm. You get these tiny droplets of water and as the air, they churn around in the air, they stick together and again, eventually they've become large enough to form raindrops that can fall out and get us wet. So the same thing's happening here. These grains are sticking together and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, there is a problem here. When they're very small, like dust grains up to the size of maybe a centimetre or so, we can understand how they stick together. Yep. Once they get up to maybe the size of a metre or something, or a few metres like the size of a van, then the gravity will start pulling them together. That's right. That's, that's actually a puzzle how you get two bits of gravel to stick. I mean, imagine you picked up some gravel and threw it at me, and I threw some back at you. They're not going to stick in midair. That's right. And no one actually knows how this happens. It's a problem. A lot of the simulations get your particles up to the size of gravel, and if you can somehow magically turn them into things the size of meters or tens of meters, they'll stick because of gravity. But how you get things in that intermediate size to stick is actually one of the unsolved problems of solar system formation. We know it happens, but we don't really know why. So there's really a gap between having a few things that exist and stuff large enough, which is very clear through gravity will accumulate more. What are, what are the ideas? Do we have any well, clues? One theory is some sort of gravitational instability that maybe you get like eddies and piles all the stuff together. Okay. Um, so you know, if you get a stream, sometimes you've got leaves blowing on the surface where it's swirling around, you get all those leaves come together in a mass in the centre. Mm, that's Even right. though leaves wouldn't normally stick, that swirling of the gas around them maybe pushes them together. Okay. So it's probably something like this, but we don't know the details. Yep. But you end up with dust grains sticking together to form gravel, gravel sticking together to form things the size of your fist, things the size of your fist sticking together to form things the size of a car, things that big combined together to form things the size of a building, and so on and so on. It gets as these lumps get bigger and bigger. Once they're near the size of mountains, their gravity will stop pulling them together. Yep. And so you're going rapidly building till eventually you're going to end up with things like the size of the moon or Mars um, orbiting around the sun. So I guess if that's the case, then shouldn't there be more of them? There would have been a lot more. So here's a simulation. I've randomly put a whole bunch of things in orbit around the sun. I've given them far too much mass, so it happens quickly rather than over millions of years. <laughs> but you can see from their gravity, they're going to start pulling each other together, and they're going to start colliding and merging. Yeah, it's kind of chaotic what's going on here. Yes. And so you started with a lot of these things, and as time goes on, they get fewer and fewer, but bigger and bigger. So some have collided into the sun, some have been flung out, some have collided into each other. That's right. So. This is what I like to call the era of carnage. So basically you end up with <laughs> probably where there are now four inner planets, there would have been maybe a hundred smaller lumps of rock. So, but still much smaller than the Earth or the Moon or something probably like that. Probably about the size of the Moon. Okay. Um, and they would have been mostly orbiting fine, not and over a time scale of a few hundreds of thousands or millions of years. Their gravity will slightly pull each other out of their orbit mm -hmm. until they start colliding. Um, and you'll get... These would have been very big collisions. Imagine two things the size of the moon smashing into each other, then two things the size of Mars smashing into each other. So it would have been a very violent period with these things crashed together until eventually it stops when the lumps that are remaining are so far apart that they don't really pull each other from gravity. So we've kind of, have, through this chaos, have actually cleared out a lot of stuff. So whatever's remaining is relatively fine and safe? Yeah. Now, um, Remember that our solar system is very big and very empty. Yeah. And this is why. If it was any more crowded, the gravity between the things would start pulling them together. So it would have been much more crowded originally. It's now settled down so that the things that are left are so far apart that, we, we, that they're not going to collide very much. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't say never. It's actually entirely possible sometime in the next 5 or 10 billion years. The sun might well melt us all first before that, but certainly over the next few billion years, it's actually entirely possible that there could still be another planet collision. Okay. That maybe the very small gravitational pull of, say, Venus and Earth on each other 
It's not going to do anything on a time scale of only millions of years, but over hundreds of millions or thousands of millions of years, maybe that pool will slowly, slowly If, if you tug on it your... every time, over time, you get a lot. Yeah. So probably if the solar system was going to survive another 100 billion years, slowly you'd warp things until there might be a few more collisions. So those whole collisions may not have finished. Okay. Um, however, the sun's not going to last that long, so almost certainly we'll get swallowed by the sun before there are any more planet collisions. Okay. In your five billion years from now, but what's happened is that as the things collide and leave bigger and bigger gaps, the average time scale between collisions gets longer. Uh, so early yeah. on, it might have only been a million years between collisions, then it might be ten million years per collision. Now the average time per collision is maybe ten billion years, which is now longer than the age of the solar system. Yep. Okay. So basically, it seems to have settled down now, and that's why. Um, plants are very far apart. And is that why also then, I guess when we looked at some of those pictures of those planet, protoplanetary disks, where we saw that spinning gas and those lines carved out, there was a lot more than even what our solar system has. It could, it could well be, it could well be. We don't really know the details. But these collisions, so the last stages before we end up with our solar system as we know it now, is, is going to be really rather big collisions, like something the size of Mars hitting something the size of Venus. Because the rest of them have already been ploughed into each other, so we're only left with a few big things. And this might actually explain a lot of the rather strange things about our solar system. Ah. For example, you know, all the planets go around the sun in the same direction, and most of them also spin in the same way. That's right, and I assume this is because they were all forming from the same gas cloud, we were all spinning around, and that kept going till today. That's right, but it's not quite the case. There are a few things that don't spin the right way. Neptune and Venus actually spin backwards. Yes. And the Earth, while it spins the same way, is tilted by 23.4 degrees, which is responsible for the seasons on Earth. Yes, and th this is the very important thing, that we are tilted, we have seasons. And also, we're not the only one that has a tilt, right? Yeah, but all the planets are tilted to some extent. And it could well be that what caused these tilts is these last few big collisions. That just the angle that that last big lump that came in knocked us over a bit. So it didn't destroy us, it didn't make us crumble, but it had a big impact and slightly fell over. And it could well be those last big collisions actually would have killed us if we'd been there, but probably would have melt melted the whole surface of the Earth. It wasn't going to be very pleasant. But it could likewise be that last collision that formed Venus got it spinning backwards. And the last few collisions that formed Neptune tilted over its orbit, so it's spinning at more than 90 degrees and so on. So a lot of the weirdnesses are things that on average, they spin the same way, but not quite. Could just be due to those lot, the randomness of those last few impacts. And because it would be random and there would only be a few, not everyone would be the same thing, and it'd be kind of hard to predict which one would have it. This actually may explain what we were talking about earlier, the strange density of the Moon. So okay. the Moon and the Earth, if you look at the samples from the Moon that Apollo astronauts brought back, and samples from the Earth, it's clear they came from the same so, yeah. material. They were all the same ratios of everything, pretty much. But... Earth is considerably more dense than the Moon. And we think this is because the Earth has an iron core and the Moon doesn't. So there's not much iron at the Earth's surface, enough to keep Australian economy working, but um, most of the iron on Earth is 4,000 yep. kilometres below our feet in the core because it melted when it was all lava and flowed to the centre. Um, but the Moon doesn't, is much less dense probably because it doesn't have the iron core. Does that mean it was formed after? Well, the idea is that maybe the Moon was blasted off by a collision. So here's some simulations. We assume that something about the size of Mars comes but it, in. But it wasn't Mars, Earth. though. It was just about the size of Mars? Yeah, yeah. It would have been a lump about the size of Mars. It wouldn't be Mars. and give it another name. And it, it probably formed as a planet. And then just in the random play of this era of carnage, it came in and collided. And here from the paper, there's a number of different collisions with things coming in at different speeds and angles. And you see that they've given both the, the, the Mars-like thing and the proto-Earth an iron core and a softer outside. Yep, okay. And as you collide these things, different collisions happen in different ways. But what can often happen is that if it comes in at the right angle, like you can see here, the core of this other thing can fall into the core of the Earth, mm. leaving just the stuff that came from the outside to coalesce and form a planet. So you can see here, this particular collision is just forming an Earth with a spinning ring around it, which will soon go away. But here, what you've actually managed to form is an Earth with a core and a lump of stuff that was originally in the outer layers of the Earth and the outer layers of this Mars-like thing without the core, because the core fell into the here. Ah, so if this collision happened and then a whole bunch of stuff got flung out, that stuff that got flung out is now the Moon. Yes. So the idea would be that you've got the moon, 
He had a glancing blow from this thing that was originally much bigger than the moon is now, which is why we think maybe Mars-ish size. Yep. And it, the Mars-ish thing dumped its core in the middle of the Earth, but the outer layers of both spun around and somehow coalesced. This is still somewhat controversial, yep. but a lot of people think this is a reasonable idea. This can explain why the moon has mostly the same stuff, but doesn't seem to have that dense core because its density is too low. Interesting.